I think you can never actually forget your roots, where you come from. The challenge will be how to not turn our shoulders to those who helped us in the beginning. And that's not just our user base, it's the people who joined us in the beginning when no one knew about us, when we didn't have a product. Those are also super important for us because without them we wouldn't have built anything. This is the story of a new generation company with a attitude that says, we're going to change the world, we're going to be different. It was provocative, it was in your face. And people like that saying, hey, there's a new kid in town and he's not gonna play by the rules. That's an interesting story. Okay, so let us take this from the beginning. OnePlus was founded in December 2013 by Pete and Carl. Hi, everyone. Hey, guys. Starting a new smartphone company might not seem like the most innovative idea. We needed a new smartphone like we need a hole in the head. But they both felt the industry was missing something. We just saw that there weren't a lot of good products on the market. No one has ever communicated to ask the user, hey, what do you want? So on December 17th, Pete posted his first thread on the forum, inviting everyone to help them build the perfect smartphone. It quickly attracted the attention of tech enthusiasts, and within days, the forum had turned into a community. The forums were actually the very first forums I ever signed up for. I actually heard about the phone from like my friends who we were talking about tech. So I went online, the phone wasn't out yet. In his post, Pete asked the community to voice her opinion on hardware and software options. Which kind of got us into like a fever. I became so involved with the phone, but I was also becoming involved with the user community. And this is what, you know, it made me stay because I met friends, because the community was such a great community. With a promise to never settle, OnePlus quickly attracted more people to join the forum. So Pete and Carl got their team together and went to work. We actually didn't know what would happen when we started OnePlus. We just knew that all the Android smartphones on the market weren't made well enough. At the beginning, it was uh, a bit basic, everything that we were doing. Uh, we didn't have an, an actual budget. Uh, we just had, you know, like three or four people with three or four brains uh, to use, and that's essentially what, what we did. And when you tried to hire people, it was also very hard because it was something that no one had heard about before. So it's understandable. Why would they want to join this unheard of thing before in the in Shenzhen? Even though there were some initial challenges, the announcement of OnePlus generated a massive hype. Early adopters gathered on the forum, creating the foundation for the community. We were very excited back then. We were doing all kinds of like little conspiracy stuff. Thanks to the dedicated fans, the community around OnePlus kept growing through word of mouth. When the OnePlus One launched, the community had reached tens of thousands. I stayed up till three in the morning uh, to watch the launch. It was very, 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 very exciting. A startup called OnePlus launched a low-cost phone today called the OnePlus One. The specs were released, it was amazing. It was fast, great camera, unlock, good memory. I was bringing it to work and everyone was looking at it. What's this phone and oh, it's so great. The first time holding the OnePlus One was completely different to the smartphones I'd had before. It felt really good. The hype was kind of like out of this world. It was something absolutely crazy. When we launched the product, we got 3,000 uh, requests per second to our website, and it went down immediately. I don't know what we've done, but we've done something pretty significant. 
we kept releasing invites and every single month we were selling more than the previous month. I think for other companies, like you start selling the first, let's say month, month and a half, you sell a lot of funds, then it kind of like dies out. But for us, it was like, well, you know, we release more invites and people buy more funds. I remember talking to Pete about what our goals should be. And we said, if we can sell 30,000 phones in our first year, then it means that there's enough people out there who you know, agree with our ideas. But we ended up selling uh, almost a million phones in our first year. So that's kind of how everything started. After the huge success with the first phone, they began preparing for the OnePlus 2. With loads of confidence in this super hype brand, what could possibly go wrong? Hype is a very effective way to break through clutter. But now that you've got my attention, what are you going to do with it? If you're not able to meet the expectation, then that same hype can backfire on you with the same level of intensity. So OnePlus started the journey to release their second phone aiming to create their next flagship killer. But following up on the success of the OnePlus One wasn't going to be easy. To top the hype of their first phone and take the release of the OnePlus Two to the next level, OnePlus had to take a new and unexplored approach, doing the world's first product launch in VR. So here it is, the OnePlus Two. Getting the VR production in place was just one part of launching the OnePlus Two they were thinking globally. We're gonna be in Times Square. We're gonna have like one of the main billboards in Times Square. We're gonna be in eight other cities around the world. The launch itself was a huge success. But as for all big parties, there comes a day after. I was super excited after everything that happened yesterday. And then uh, I went home, started browsing like all the comments online. But then I also read on Reddit yesterday night and that kind of put everything into more perspective. So I think whenever we feel confident, we should read Reddit. So the comments on Reddit are like 80 to 90% negative. And the comments on Reddit were a great indicator of how the OnePlus 2 was received by the fans. It didn't really turn out the way OnePlus wanted. When I first saw the OnePlus 2 and the specs, um, I was very disappointed. I, am, I was almost heartbroken. So we probably got a bit out of touch with the community. I don't think we were listening that much to what they had to say and what their needs were. And I think that's, that's where things went slightly wrong. I do think it was very valuable. And I still think, you know, if you look at the whole picture, we got lucky in our second year. We got the chance to make such a big mistake so early on and that we could all really learn from it and, you know, become more mature and more humble because of it. If we see where OnePlus is in its history as we go into the third year, they have arrived on the scene as a credible player, as uh, people have sat up and taken notice. However, in order to be in the top tier of competitors, they will have to scale. Going into the third year, OnePlus had to really reflect and define who they are, where the company's going, and how to cope with the extensive growth. So they say the tactics that sort of brought you here will need to evolve if you're going to get to the next level. You have to sort of give up some of your childish habits and act a little bit more like a grown-up. Things change a lot. Like most of my original colleagues already left, which is normal from every company who is experienced like this growth. But it's very important that you build a culture that's sustainable and that speaks true to your brand and that speaks true to finally the values of the company and the people who work in it. So there's really a symbiosis, if you will, between the people that you already have in the team and the people that you want to bring in. We had a very strong ideas and we rallied everyone together because we really believed in it and we got too cocky. You know, when you're too cocky, you actually don't learn as fast because you already think that you know everything. But then we got a lot of negative feedback and that caused us to lose our confidence. 
After experiencing growing pains on all levels, the aftermath of the OnePlus 2 launch shook the company in its foundation and put a lot of pressure on the next coming release, the OnePlus 3 and 3T. The 3 and the 3T was kind of like the year of maturity, but it was also a year of not much progress when it comes to doing cool things and cool stuff, which is what we like to do. I just kept saying no to my people. Don't do that, no, don't do that, don't do that. And just stay in the basic features and functions and uh, do the basic stuff perfectly and then think about them later. The 3 was received uh, very, very well. We realized that we couldn't overextend ourselves again. So we just focused on what we knew we were good at, which is here's our device. It's one of the best devices out there. You can play with it too. If you're always focused on changing the world, always trying to do things that are innovative for the sake of being innovative, that might eventually kill you. The OnePlus 3 and 3T were great products, although they were very safe products, and that represented the overall mentality of the company. We went safe everywhere. The loyal fan base around OnePlus acts as a compass with directions they'd like the company to take and not to take. So as you think about where OnePlus got its early success, it was really they captured the imagination of a group of early adopters who are not customers as much as fans. It goes beyond loyalty, it's brand love. And today the younger generation is asking a question. They're asking not what you make, but what you stand for. So I think that the reason OnePlus captured the imagination of an early group of fans is because they took this attitude of never settle, the attitude of disruption. Now the interesting question is uh, when you get to more mainstream customers, do they care as much? How do you scale fandom? The community for OnePlus is its biggest asset. And I've never seen a community quite so dedicated. We're, we're like these anchor points for these super techie nerds. And they've never gotten um, any company that talked to them like we do. So we're very unique in that respect. Grassroots brands, usually you have a very loyal audience at first that's basically behaving like a cult, if you will. As you scale your audience and your community, you go further and further away from the epicenter of what the brand promised maybe was to the initial user audience. We try to keep everyone happy as much as we can, but yeah, sometimes uh, it's difficult to have like a very clear direction. What's really important is to have that face-to-face -face interaction where we can really get into a nugget of information that people maybe wouldn't have shared otherwise. And so we wanted to have a really open and honest dialogue with people. And that's why we call it the Open Ears Forum. In the last few years, we've come a long way in terms of our customer support, but we appreciate that there's still things that we need to improve. What our fans would think about how we're growing, hopefully they'll be proud and they will feel like they've also been a part of it and it's also their baby. So when they'll see our phones everywhere in the future, they'll be proud of the fact that they had a hand in helping make this happen. With past releases behind them, OnePlus set out on a path to again bring the community closer, gathering their feedback and inviting them to events, meetups, and their first global onstage launch with the OnePlus 5T. What's up, New York? I think the only way to win people back is to consistently perform well for a long time. In a month, we'll be celebrating our fourth anniversary, but it feels way longer than that because so many things have happened. As a product company, you are only as good as your last product. And earlier this year, we released the OnePlus 5. It represented everything that we'd learned and was our most complete phone ever. We don't believe in new and different technologies if they don't provide a meaningful user benefit. And this is our approach with the T-Line.
the logical end of this story should be the birth of something that is sustainable. Can you keep up this level of innovation? Can you keep scaling? Is it a flash in the pan? Is it a short term thing? So I think that what I hope to see as this story continues and evolves is something that is built to last and not just built you know, to capture people's imagination in a short period of time. So I think sustaining and scaling and building something that is lasting is uh, going to be the challenge going forward. And I hope that's where the story ends. Today is a really big day for us. We're four years old and over the past four years, it's been your constant feedback and suggestions that have held us accountable. When we've done the wrong things you've told us and you've cheered upon us when we did the right things, you genuinely want to see us become stronger and improve. So I really hope uh, this can continue and that OnePlus can become a stronger and stronger company and make you proud.